Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Matt, the vocals of Cryptopsy, and you're listening to my podcast, Vox and Hops, where I normally sit down with metal musicians and talk about their lives, music, and craft beer. But this time around, I'm starting a new segment, and this is Vox and Hops Brewer Talks. This past weekend, I was at Bière et Savoir de Chambly, which is a monumental beer fest up here in Quebec, Canada, where I am from. And I went there over the weekend to have some chats with uh, some local brewers, and I'm excited to share these all with you. It's a new format. I have, uh, over the past weekend, I did six interviews with six amazing brewers from excellent excellent breweries and i'm excited to share these they're going to be coming out every tuesday as this one has i'm still going to be releasing my friday releases as well but this is going to be underneath the vox and hops brewer talks so here it is the first vox and hops brewer talk today i'm with Hugues Leroux kelly from matera brassard tonnelier i warn you what you are about to hear is very disturbing indeed Hey, what's up, everybody? Today I'm with Hugues Leroux Kelly from Matera Brasseur Tonnelier, and we are at Bière et Savoir in Chambly. How are you doing, Hugues? It's very good to be with you. I'm doing great. Nice setting by the water here, drinking nice beer with you. Yeah, it's yeah, good it's, to be here. It's, it's absolutely beautiful. I've never ever been to this beer fest before, and you are my first uh, interview of the day. Feel special. So I'm fresh. <laughs> <laughs> it turns out that we're, we actually have a, a friend in common. A childhood friend of mine. Yeah. Shout out to Derek White. Yeah, hello, DW. <laughs> small, small world out there, even in the world of beer. Mm-hmm. I find it's a small world in the metal in the metal industry yeah. community, and now here it is extending into the the beer community. Mm-hmm. Let's talk a little bit about uh, how you got into brewing, mm-hmm. why you brew beer. What was that first passion that you just discovered beer? Well, after after I I finished college, I I left for two years. I went one year in Australia and one year in England. And eventually in England, this is where I start working in the restaurant business and discovering the English beer, which are not my favorite at all, but it still enlightened the passion and going to Dublin and seeing the Guinness factory and so on. And when I came back and I started university, I studied in geography. One of my friends said, we'll just get 20 people, invest 50 bucks each. That way we can start some all grain brewing. And we started like in 2007 bring a hundred uh, liters all grain from the beginning and then eventually we got a bit better we took some courses and bought better equipment a lab and so on and then at the end we were just bring like three times a month once a month perfectioning our session IPA once a month our double IPA and once a month for us so just doing pleasure. something pleasure beer or sour beers or whatever that that first hundred liter batch was that always for sale or, uh, or was it just for pleasure and you guys were just well it's brewing illegal to have fun. of yes, course it's yes. not for sale <laughs> <laughs> I understand but, yeah but I mean you, you still give some to your friends to have some feedbacks and so on put on some little parties here and there to I mean, at first people tell you your beer is good and you believe it, but at one point you believe yourself that it's good. Mm-hmm. So this sort gives you that extra motivation of being like, hey, I can, do, I can do this really properly. And then eventually we started building a business plan and try to make it a business. And that's what we did. I've been following you guys since the beginning. Always been a fan of Matera Brassard Tonnelier. You guys uh, put out one of my top stouts Mm -hmm. last year. I had it on the podcast many times. I talked about it a lot. The Stuttgart Stout yeah. is it's it's unbelievable. Mm-hmm. It's just so good. What what brought you to make a beer like that? Um, well, we always uh, like stouts and barrel aging, and we tr- we were trying to get uh, get a different take on it, and we got inspired by a brewery uh, called Modern Times in California. Of course, yes. And they make their own coffee, barrel aged coffee, and the same beer that we're making. So. We uh, kind of asked them for information on how they, they make it and so on. They were so nice of sending us a beer, a coffee, and like tips on how to brew it. And I'm pretty sure we're the first one in Canada that has done it. So a lot of people think that the beer actually touches the wood, but it doesn't. Mm. It's the coffee that does. So what we do is we take... Uh, green coffee beans that are really humid and then for for three months we put them in a freshly emptied barrel so it soaks up all the flavors for three months and we proceed to the the roasting the torrefaction of the coffee and then we recirculate the beer on that 
that uh, on that coffee. Got it. Yeah, yeah. So the point is not to to boil it, and when you don't boil it, you don't get the astringency mm -hmm. and the bitterness. That's right. Yeah. So you get more like the cocoa and the chocolate flavors, and that's why the finale is so smooth. It's not like like a, a, a harsh coffee, you know. So it, it we kind of put ourselves on the map with that, and then we did a second version because. We import barrels. That's just another side of our business. So it's easy for us to have access to really good barrels. So we did the cognac version. And now we're in the works of doing a third one. Uh, the, the three months of the coffee has done aging in, in uh, Spanish brandy barrels. Awesome. So, so yes. that's going to be the third, yes, I'm super the third version coming out this, this fall. And you've, obviously the bourbon is just our regular product that we're going to come back uh, with each year. I'm happy to see that it's available all year round. Yeah. Because I, I still drink stouts in the summer. Even though a lot of people just save it for winter, I don't believe that. Yeah. Let's switch gears. Let's talk about the beer that we're drinking right now. This yeah. is your Riesling. So it was aged in a Riesling cask. Is yeah. that right? Yeah. So what's the name of this one? It's a Frau, which Frau. means Frau, which means a lady, German. La lady yeah. in German. That's right. And uh, Riesling, obviously, for Riesling, because we bought five fooders, four that are 2,500 liters and one that's 2,000 liters, and uh, they all had Riesling in them previously. So the signature is there because, like for this one, it's the first beer that's been in this barrel. Got it. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. It's not wine, you know? Got it, yeah. And since it's the first passage, like, we, you can taste more the, the Riesling in it. Do you think it's going to go down? Is it something that you won't be able to make again because of that? Um, maybe we'll just make it age a bit longer, or we were thinking of maybe putting a little bit of uh, Riesling must. Yes, just yes. Just to add a little flavor, which you will not get in the second uh, passage there. Let's taste this, see what's yeah. got. Cheers. Cheers. It smells like raisin juice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Delectable. Nice color. It's like a, mm -hmm. it's like a light yellow, but it's still a little bit hazy. Yeah. Not quite fully opaque, but uh, like a light straw color I'm gonna get to the tasting points but it does look like a cider yes like yes. if you it's buy closer a cider. to a wine yeah almost. exactly yeah. in the mouth yeah it's delicious it's dry yeah. it's um, very drinkable and dangerous and the ABV of this is a six yeah so it's not so bad yeah, yeah. yeah. it's a good way to start off exactly. my, my Chambly experience exactly and what we what we like about this and there's a tendency in the beer world going towards Uno beer Uno is uh, Latin for wine yes so beer that tend to look a bit more like wine or have had must like grape must put into it so it's kind of a hybrid between wine and beer and people that are liking this or experimenting a lot with this so for me this beer tastes a, a mix of uh, white wine riesling and cider and, and beers so it's true. yeah so I, I really like the refreshing taste and i think it's a great summer beer Vox and hops. Normally, I ask this question. I say, "Is all about beer." Yeah. I have to do the opposite in this in this case. Vox and hops is all about metal musicians at the yeah. same time. Do you or have you ever listened to any metal bands in your life? I uh, unfortunately, I'm not the right person for you on this. <laughs> I've gotten to like uh, some stuff through my friends, but uh, I'm not a big connoisseur, un unfortunately. I do, I do enjoy uh, Metallica and more the like the I'd say the regular stuff, not like the hard stuff. But unfortunately, I, I'm not a, a big metal fan. Have you ever considered doing some brewers make beers in collaboration with bands? Is yeah. that ever something you thought you would do with Matera? Um, we're not restrictive in any sense. If we find a project that suits who we are and what we want to project as a brand and as, let's say, we take a cause, for example, uh, we're not close to anything. We like to experiment. We like to try new things. So if the fit is good, obviously, you're just not gonna, just going to do a collaboration with just a like that. person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, if, if you get along and if you have a great idea to make a good beer, then let's go. Awesome. Uh, we're all open to ideas. Awesome. You hear that, bands? Yeah. Matt has got that stuff for you, but you got to get along first. Exactly. <laughs> well, Usually we have a beer and that's cool. <laughs> exactly, but that's, but that's what it is all about. It's just why Vox and Hops works so well. Mm -hmm. I meet people that I've never met before. You sit down, you're drinking a beer with them, automatically you're somewhat more friendly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what is your shit beer of choice? The best of the worst. The best of the worst? Uh, of the big market beers I'm talking about. If you walk into like a... A store, or you go to like a restaurant, and you want to have a beer, but there's no craft beer selection. Only the regulars. What do you choose? If I had to go for like Molson or Labatt, 
like just the regular stuff, not the the, the breweries they bought. Exactly. I'd probably go for Molson X or okay. fifth, the Bat 50. Excellent. Because yes. those are two classics. My family has been drinking Molson X, and it's not bad. The Bat 50 is a bit sweet, but it's a classic beer. You can even have it warm. It is absolutely. Fishing. That is my my yeah. best of the worst. Yeah. La Bat Saint Count for sure. Yeah. If not, if I'm stuck, let's say in a convenience store, or I'd probably go for um, Saint Ambroise Pale Ale. That's right. That's the one that changed the whole game for me. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the one that changed the game for me are the Unibu products. Of course. Uh, Finds Monde. Modit is not as good as before, but I think Finds Monde and Trois Pistoles. I did my university drinking Trois Pistoles. <laughs> That was absolutely my beer of choice yeah, back in the day, good. too. It was always a mistake when you bought two. Yeah. <laughs> After one, you're still good for the second one. Yeah, but yeah. Then, ooh. And then by the end of the yeah. second one, you're in trouble. <laughs> one of the big breweries, Quebec breweries, that got me into craft beer was Le Castel. Yeah. Who are sadly not here today. I saw that they scrapped a whole batch of their New England IPA. They discovered that it tasted a bit buttery, that Dacto pronounced, you know, the bird I'm talking about. Yep. And they just, they pulled it and they scrapped the whole batch. Is that ever something that you would be able to do? Of like, course. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, we've we're always been proud of the quality beers that we make. And I think one of our motto is not to serve something you would not like to drink. And we're very picky. Awesome. So whatever we serve, we're picky. And now the market is at a place where it's very, very competitive. Absolutely. So if, if somebody buys your beer for the first time and it's not good, they'll, never, likely, they'll never buy it again. They'll never buy it. so much so, Exactly. Yeah. So I, what we've been trying to do with our branding is getting people to buy it because of the branding and then rebuy it because of the quality. And that's what's happening, obviously. But I think it's... I understand the reality of starting a business and sometimes it's hard when you don't want to throw away a batch, but I think it's the worst business decision you can make, serving a beer and ruining your reputation. So I would never do that. That's very good advice right there. Yeah. You brew at Aschlag? Yeah. Uh, I've heard, I don't know if this is the truth, when you brew at someone else's house, you can't actually do anything, you just pass along your recipe. Yeah. How does that feel? Um, well, obviously that's not the way we wanted to to go we wanted our own place but you know when it's a big investment start yeah. you don't have a million dollars and so no. on so that was a, a great option for us um the first few batches we uh we we go there and brew with them to make sure it's fine but obviously after you just pass on the recipe um we take pride in in making the recipe better every month or every time we brew it change little thing little twists but obviously it's not as fun as just being there yourself but it is recipes that we've been putting together for 10 years so it's not like i haven't done it or or how many years do you think until you can actually get your own place um do you guys have like a plan we have a we have a new approach on uh on what the beer industry is turning out to be because now there's a lot of breweries and they have a there's a lot of brewing systems mm -hmm. and people are not using them full time okay got last it. year yeah. the imbq said said people in Quebec are using their brewing systems 54% of the time. So why would I go and invest like yeah, $500,000 when I can just produce my word something somewhere else? Got it, yeah. Like no man so, brewing almost. So what we want to do in the next year is build uh, one of the nicest uh, barrel warehouses in Quebec. So we want to just buy wort. It's not fermented beer. You put that in a thousand liter tank, bring it over, and then you do the fermentation, the assemblage, the bottling. So in your house? In our house. Oh, that's cool. That's smart. And then we just keep our three regular cans at Ashlag because it's beautiful. Distribution. Brewery, and it's the distribution the everywhere. Distribution, yeah, and yeah. we can brew 6,000 liters at a time. Crazy, yeah. Yeah. So, so that's the plan. Keep our regular cans there and just us building one of the nicest uh, warehouses. Uh, Barrel warehouses in Quebec. Yeah, that's awesome. Eric, thank you so much for coming, sitting down with Vox and Hops. This is the very first Vox and Hops Brewer Talks. Yeah, there's gonna be more to come. I'm um, really honored, man. Yeah, we're gonna keep hanging out, but not with you guys. Okay. Cheers. Hey, thank you all so much for listening right to the end. I hope you enjoyed uh, listening to that podcast as much as I enjoyed doing it. Uh, Ig is super cool. Such a small world, as I mentioned, that uh, we have a friend in common who happens to be a childhood friend of mine. Funny backstory on that. They lived on the corner of the street, two houses away from my parents' house when I grew up. We're the whites, the white house, as we called it, and they used to have these epic parties back in the day. And I was... Uh, 
jamming downtown with Three Mile Scream at the time, and I would take uh, the last train back to Two Mountains, which is where I grew up. And uh, I would always hope on these late nights I'd come in and it would be one in the morning after taking the last train, and I'd be turning the corner heading towards my house, and I would pray that there'd be a party at the White House. And every once in a while there was, and I was always very happy. Super stoked to, to have got the chance to, to speak to Ugg. As I mentioned during the interview, I'm a huge fan of the brewery, always have been. I love everything they, that they've put out. And uh, it was just, just super, super humble, super chill dude to, to sit down and uh, chat with uh, some of these brewers that I've been just following. You know, it's like, it's like almost like meeting a rock star. <laughs> so thank you so much for listening. This Friday, I have three new episodes coming out, the final episodes from Heavy Montreal. And they're really, really good stuff, so I'm excited to share those with you. Don't miss out on those. And next week, I'll have another Box and Hops Brewer Talk, which will be dropping next Tuesday. I hope you have a good rest of the week. And remember to enjoy life, metal, and craft beer. Cheers, Box and Hops heads. (laughs) 